Tandem, A Tale of Shadows, developed by Monochrome Paris and published by Hayton Interactive, is a puzzle platformer where a young Emma teams up with a teddy bear named Fenton to uncover what happened to Thomas, the son of a famous illusionist, by exploring Thomas's mansion home. Is this a game for you? I'm Journey of the Indie Journey, and here are some reasons you might want to play and some that might make you decide to pass. Play. The atmosphere is what struck me almost immediately. It's limbo vibes, it's dark vibes, it's inside vibes, it's all the vibes. It's a mix of colorful and whimsical, yet dark and sinister. I'm sure many have made this comparison, but it's very Tim Burton-esque. Clearly a lot of time and attention went into the fine details of the look of this game, because even aspects of the game that are not able to be interacted with, or in some cases that you can't even reach, are beautifully rendered and pretty darn detailed. So much of this world seems alive, even things that shouldn't be. But I very much enjoyed this post-Victorian steampunk clock punk style aesthetic. And the music is a fantastic addition to the ambiance. Every chapter has a signature music across its levels and the music really adds a sense of unease and reminds you that this home is not a safe place. The sound design is pretty impressive and immersive. Everything from Emma's footsteps to the creaking, groaning, or squelching of obstacles or the sound that Fenton makes when he jumps on a button are very well done. Pass. Although a lot of love went into the look of the game, the story itself doesn't feel as fleshed out as it could be. And what you learn up front is thrown at you pretty fast. In fact, the game barely boots up before the opening scene kicks in and Emma and Fenton rush off to Thomas's mansion in a race against the clock. So if you're in a mindset of waiting through a couple of title cards and going through the settings leisurely before pressing play, a few key points of the narration just might pass you by. However, the saving grace is that the opening cutscene repeats every time you log in, so you can hear it again and again if you need to, but it's also skippable if you don't. Play. The gameplay was quite engaging. You play as both Emma and Fenton to solve environmental puzzles to clear each stage. Each chapter has about 8 to 11 levels and is themed around a particular room of the mansion, such as the boiler room, the kitchen, or the garden. Emma is played from a top-down perspective and she is able to manipulate objects in order to cast shadows to allow Fenton, who walks on the wall in a 2D side-scrolling manner, to move from place to place. This was a brilliant touch, but be sure to remain aware of where each character is within their respective space. One neat way the game helps you keep track of who is in control is that Emma plays in color while Fenton plays in black and white. Although at times I'd still get a little bit confused about who was in control, especially when the game required a quick switch from one player to the other. Luckily controls are pretty responsive so that you can make those life and death decisions on the fly. Now don't you worry about those pesky deaths. I killed Fenton a lot. Emma too, but man I put that poor teddy bear through the ringer. Or rather several metal spikes. But checkpoints are generous and you only reset back to the start of your current obstacle so go ahead and risk it for a biscuit. As far as the puzzles go, they hit the sweet spot. Not too easy and not too challenging. I am a lover of puzzle games, but I'm no expert, so even an average Joe like me was able to figure out what to do in a pretty reasonable time frame. Now there were definitely moments where it took some brain power and good old trial and error to figure out how to do those things that needed to be done, but that's all part of the fun, right? It should take you anywhere from 3 to 5 hours on a first run through, depending on how much secret hunting you do along the way. And speaking of... Play. Secrets! I love a good secret, don't you? And this game has its fair share of them. Secrets can be found by either Fenton or Emma by exploring the levels in full. Or you can be like me and have to go back and replay most of the levels to locate secrets because you were so focused on the puzzle solving you forgot there was a secondary task. There are some things to interact with just to get a closer look, but when you find hidden secrets you will get a voiceover with a short snippet of story exposition as well as a picture to fill out your art gallery that sheds even more light on the story. And for us achievement hunters out there, finding secrets also earns you achievements. So I'll add that this might be a pass for some players because not finding secrets means that you lose out on certain important aspects of the game. And no one wants to be a loser, right? Pass. The cutscenes. 
Most of the game focuses on puzzle solving, but there are cutscenes at the start and end of each chapter to help you piece together what is really happening in this place. Now while I praise the gameplay graphics overall, because they're pretty dang good, I feel like it made the cutscenes pale in comparison. Usually cutscenes feel more clean and polished in the gameplay since they are so important to helping tie the story together, but I actually felt like the game itself was more polished than many of the cutscenes and I do really think that the narration really didn't do enough to support the game's plot. I felt this was particularly important in Emma's case as this is the only time we really get to see or hear her since her gameplay is the most top down as of the top down style there could be. It made her feel stiff and wooden and was kind of hard to connect with her as a character. But that's just being really nitpicky. Who really passes on a game just because of the cutscenes? I just felt the need to point that out. Play. The enemies and obstacles. The developers took great care in making the threats in the game consistent with your environment. In the kitchen, dodge some gas burners. In the boiler room, navigate toxic sludge. I loved all of these cool critters and creatures and interesting ways of navigating these levels. And even some enemies and obstacles were more challenging than they appeared and you had to strategize accordingly. Love that. So what do you think? Is this one to play or one you might pass on? I'd like to take a moment to thank the developers and publishers for providing me a Steam key for this game so that I may experience this mysterious adventure. Be sure to let me know if you enjoyed this by leaving a like. I'm Journey from the Indie Journey. Thank you and I'm out.